Hi everybody, Mark Williams here at Monday Masters, and today we're going to talk to three gentlemen from Credit 360 about credit. And I also want to say that we've got here Andre Coakley and America's Broken Credit System, an attempt to repair it. Okay, looking forward to having them on as guests. Hi everybody, so we're here talking to Andre Coakley, Trevor Williams, and John Bowen from Credit 360. We're going to talk a little bit about credit. So gentlemen, thank you for being here once again. Thank um, you no right worries, right. no worries. Listen, so tell us a little bit about the organization, um, Credit 360. You know, there's plenty of credit agencies out there, right, that are saying that they're going to help all these individuals repair their credit. But tell me a little bit of the history about Credit 360. Well, Credit 360 <laughs> Credit Repair, um, the three of us, we've been together for 14, 15 years consecutively now. Oh, wow. Um, we initially came together, um, Andre started, started a mortgage company back in um, early part of January 2006. Okay. And uh, roughly two years later, the three of us well, came I together. I think even before we started Credit 360, we met you. <laughs> right, 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 right. And neighbor works, right. 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 We, we were right, really right. doing our nonprofit where we teach the financial literacy aspect, but it was always, you kind of mentioned something, be for profit. Right, right, right. And that's kind of what always it. stuck with us and we thought about credit repair. So it's been a minute as they say, right? Yeah, right, right, okay. right. Good, good, good. all kind of came together. Um, roughly 2012, we started uh, Credit 360, full-fledged credit repair. Okay. And ever since then, man, we just kind of really combined our knowledge from the mortgage industry and the credit right. industry, uh, title insurance, and we've been able to facilitate, you know, our clients getting to that next level. Okay, love that. So, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask as well is basically what separates your organization and company from other credit agencies that are out there right now? I think one of the main things that we like to do is put passion before profit. Okay. Um, put the individual first. Um, we know credit is a, uh, is a, it's a sacred situation. Right? Absolutely. Um, a lot of times um, individuals don't like to necessarily, you know, expose themselves or like to say financially interest. Yes from a credit standpoint. Um, however, we try to um, put them at ease, just let them know that, hey, we've all had credit problems. Hell, I've had credit problems yeah. myself. I've gone through foreclosures, uh, divorce, um, had you know credit issues ourselves. Right. So it's about helping these individuals understand that they're not alone, yeah. that we, we, we've experienced where they've been at. And then the other thing is that it separates us, I think, is um, that um, our Google reviews, um, that we're a company that pretty much um, puts ourselves in front of people. Okay. Um, from a standpoint where we want them to give us reviews and testimonies about their experience, and we've been quite successful at that. And, and not only getting results, great results, but we also like to educate right. our clients on right. how to not go back to having bad credit and how to always maintain good to great credit. So, you know, you mentioned that. Uh, what are some of the myths? versus facts out there that people should know about credit, right? Because there's a lot of myths out there too, um, and just kind of dispel some of those myths out there. Um, a lot of times people think their um, their financial status okay. affects their credit score. Um, we have clients who are on very, very low income, however, have very, very high credit scores, Got and it. vice versa. We have clients who have um, good income, income, however, are kind of slacking on the credit side. Okay. So it's not necessarily income-based. Okay. Um, well, um, for instance, um, a lot of people are under the impression that just because I paid off a debt that are automatically supposed to come off my credit report or um, they get the statute of limitations confused um, okay. from the last day of activity as opposed to how long it's actually been on the credit report. Got it. The last activity date from that merchant or... Well, it's actually the seven. The statute of limitations is, is seven years, but it's from the last day of activity. Okay. So it's going to be from the last day that you made a payment or the last uh, uh, period that the month that the account was open okay. before it went into a, to default and the close. Got it. Got some, it. some people believe having bad credit is a life sentence or right. that they can't have good credit because of where they're from. from like right. Anybody can have great credit and good. having bad credit, it can be changed. It's changing your habits. Okay. So, you know, I've worked with you all several times on some of the clients that think that they're actually mortgage ready, but they're not, right? And we here at PRMG want to definitely get them the um, best interest rate as well possible. So sometimes, of course, that's tied to their overall profile and the credit is a piece of that. So what are some of the things that you would mention to a first time home buyer that they should really be preparing in their credit so that when they meet with a lender that they're actually going to be ready with the best score possible? Of course, you always want to pay your bills on time, be ahead of the curve. 
Um, you know, paying the bills on time is seems so simple. Right. However, it's not the only component to have good credit. Okay. I have clients who do pay their bills on time, mm-hmm. however, still have poor credit scores ah. because other capacities of their credit just aren't in line. Got okay. it. They might have. They might be paying their bills on time, however, have high utilization, which they still would take away from the having a lot of debt. What do you mean mm-hmm. having a lot of debt? Yes. Okay. okay good. So. Um, what are some of the things that you're seeing in any of the laws related or guidelines related to credit right now? Anything changing in 2020 that we should be aware of? Oh uh, yeah, actually they're coming up with different um, scoring algorithms. So okay. Cycles coming out with a new algorithm that you know is um, actually excluding certain parts of uh, the credit profile, but also enhancing other parts. So we can see a shifting in, in, in certain people's scores okay. on that particular algorithm. Got it. So, actually, yes, um, just actually, just one, one um, it happened a couple of years ago, but still, people really don't understand. Uh, based, the loan used to be based on the breadwinner. Okay. Um, um, and whoever uh, made the most money in the household. Uh, now the loan is going to be based on who has the highest credit score. Right. And right. that's something that still hasn't really kind of, um, you know, people don't really understand that. It's okay. going to be more credit based. Okay. Good. Uh, you know. In working with a lot of the first-time home buyers, you know, a lot of them have come to me and said, "Well, I was told that if I bring down my uh, my credit limit or what I'm spending by thirty percent, that's going to help increase my score." So, Andre, right, give me some tips, man, that I can tell them to hopefully increase their score, and I can be educated as possible to do that. Okay, so first of all, that thirty percent is the maximum maximum balance that we want any credit card to be. Okay. We're normally telling you to get it down to 30% because right. you're already above 30%. So, to However, me. that's not the actual threshold that we're looking for. The actual perfect utilization is 7%. Okay. 7%, all right? So I like to use the example, 30% is like you eating McDonald's every day. You're gaining fat, <laughs> Okay. but you're also getting nutrients. Okay. Okay, however, Hmm? You're not gaining nutrients from McDonald's. Well, you are gaining nutrients, but you are gaining fat. Right. Okay. Uh, However, it's, it's a mixture. Okay. 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 However, when we're okay. talking about a 7% utilization, that's like you eating fruits, nuts, and berries. Okay. That's a strictly, strictly, strictly nutrient diet mm-hmm. that has no fat in yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, looks like I need to lose some weight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, we all, we, we, all, all, we all, all need to lose at, credit. At, at credit, fat. At yeah. credit 360, we don't really promote debt. We really right. promote credit. We try to help our clients obtain credit, okay. but let them know that adding debt to that credit card is not going to be beneficial to their credit score. Okay. And even with the home buyer, it's going to affect the DTI. Yes. Yeah. So any debt they have will right. affect their, their loan. Absolutely. Right. It will. So we really try to help our clients lower the debt to even zero if possible. Right. And just to piggyback on that 30%, that 30% must be met by the end of each day. Most people just equate it to just the credit card due. Ah, interesting. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Okay. Right. right. So, you know, well, it's actually the statement closing date, which they want to make sure. Okay. The lender takes a snapshot of your balance one day out the month. But it's not perpetual. Exactly. Right? So whatever your statement is or whatever your balance is on that statement closing date, that's the balance that they report to the credit report. Okay. All right. So that's where a lot of people kind of get a little messed up at because they normally do everything by the billing date. Okay. Right. Remember, the statement due date is the date that they plan to charge you interest. So when we're, we're waiting to that statement due date, we're waiting to the date that they're actually charging interest. Okay. Theoretically, payments should be paid prior to the due date. Okay, good. All right. So I've also heard, you know, the difference between a FICO score versus a Beacon score. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. All right, so a FICO score and Beacon score, those are algorithms. Mm-hmm. They're just two um, different type of, I guess, what, um, arithmetic um, of how to actually comprise a credit score. Okay. Um, the FICO score is the most widely used credit score, and that's normally used, or credit algorithm, which is used by Experian. Mm-hmm. However, you do also have the Beacon, which mm-hmm. is the algorithm that is attached to Equifax. Got it. All right. However, even though it's kind of confusing, <laughs> FICO is a algorithm or a score that can be bought by all three bureaus. So I can have a FICO TransUnion score. I can have a FICO Experian FICO score. FICO is its own company. It actually stands for Fair Isaac Company. Got it. Okay. And so that's where they get the FICO scoring module. And then other bureaus, the Experian Equifax is and TransUnion have adopted and that how they come up with their own version of the Experian FICO, TransUnion FICO. Okay. But like Andre was saying, Equifax has their own scoring module called a Beacon Score. Right. Which Experian doesn't have. Got it, got it. So okay. they, 
they have different scoring modules and it just, I feel, makes it more confusing for the common person. Right, right, right. To not understand what's really going on. Okay. Oh, yes, but you also have to be careful because most of the credit scores that we get from credit monitoring, uh -huh. the third-party sites, they're Vantage scores. They're yeah. not FICO scores, which I'm pretty sure you experience this a lot yeah. in your business of individuals saying, well, hey, I'm looking on this platform. My credit score is 800, but then you run the credit score that's 600. And that was my next question. Okay. What's your thought? And not in any way um, supporting one um, platform over another. But folks come to me and say, well, listen, my Credit Karma uh, told me my score was a 700. Why is it when you pulled it as a lender that it's a 650? Tell right. us a little bit about that. So there's a few different moving parts here. Right. The first part is, number one, is that the credit score that you're looking at is a FICO version of the credit score, which is a, which is a risk-based version. Okay. The version of the credit score that we're looking at on Credit Karma is a Vantage score. It's okay. an educational version of the ah, credit score. Got it. totally two different um, platforms, and they're actually looking at it from totally two different perspectives. Okay. All right. Um, that Credit Karma credit score, number one, Credit Karma, did you know, makes anywhere between three to fifteen dollars every time you apply for a credit card, hmm. and anywhere between thirty-five to forty-five dollars every time you're approved for a credit card. Okay. So now this makes sense. So a lot of times people say their credit karma score goes up and down. The reason why they do that is because they want to create consumer engagement. If a window is opening and closing, you know that one day it's closed and you can't be approved for that credit card. But they're saying that you're approved the next day. Now right. there's simple fact that they're saying you're approved, you want to apply for the credit card because you know that window is closing. If the window is always open, you're never rushed to jump through it. But that's why they make the credit scores go up and up, yeah. up and down basis because now you're you're worried about it. Hey, last week I had a 600 credit score. I, I couldn't apply for any credit cards. This week I got a 700 credit score. Let me apply now. Okay, good. Well, listen, man. You guys share tons of information. I really truly truly appreciate you guys coming on. Um, and love to have you back at one point in time as well. Okay. Absolutely. Once again, gentlemen from uh, Credit 360, we're going to share their information in the podcast as well. And looking forward to the next Monday Masters. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody.